to the Panthers, <laughs> at least I'm going to say right now, I don't think they're that dumb. It's not a big. I would agree. I, I would not give it a big stamp of approval, but when I look at the moves, they make sense. They traded away CMC. Smart. That's how Sue Shane operates his dynasty team. He makes moves like that. <laughs> like I would trade away C. I'm not winning. What am I doing with CMC? Right? They traded away CMC. They went. They 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 had like a negative quarterback. Like this is a quarterback, and the Panthers had this. Like they didn't even have a quarterback for years. <laughs> what did they do? Up. They went and got a quarterback. They got the best uh, college quarterback the last couple of years. They went and got a real quarterback. Yeah, they're making real moves. I love it. They got Adam Thielen, a pros pro, a guy who works hard. Mm -hmm. Came from nothing, right? He was he wasn't a nobody when he first came in the NFL. They're gonna learn from college. Adam Thielen. They're gonna learn. It's it's. I like the moves they're they're making. I'm not a big Frank Reich fan. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, but at least, like I'm saying, like this <laughs> this isn't Washington and this isn't the Raiders. So at least that's that's a plus. Please talk about me. Get me more excited about Mingo because I'm looking to probably draft him. I might have to reach for him. Okay. Make me less scared of drafting Mingo. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll make you less scared by putting Mingo in the context of these receivers, right? So a lot of people, they're, they're processed, right? They have a process for how they draft. They don't really care about the, the player or like the, the name. They're more about the process over the, over the player, which is fine. So they're, what these guys are doing is they're going to say, okay, every single wide receiver that got round one draft capital, I must take in the first round of my rookie draft, period. So that means Quentin Johnson, JSN, uh, Addison, and who are the last guys? Zay Flowers, Zay right? Flowers. Those four guys. So everyone is saying, I got to take these four receivers before Jonathan Mingo. I don't have an issue with that. I mean, if that's your process, that's fine. What I'm going to bank on is the upside of what the X position receiver position holds. And this is kind of going into that real football like we were talking about. Um, I was also high on DK Metcalf and AJ Brown and Debo Samuel as well. And these guys, from my memory, I think they went round two. Okay. Because there's a little bit of risk to them. But the upside is these guys are bigger human beings. They can actually play the outside X position and be you know, quote unquote, the, the one on their offense. Right. I, I like using the word alpha. So nothing you said is wrong, okay. but I think to me, to me, alpha is important. Cause it's not just X. It's that mental. The guys you named off are perfect too. Sure. It's the, yeah, yeah. the alpha mentality, the, they're going to give you the ball. When Debo is not getting targets, he's getting carries. Like true, <laughs> exactly, right, true right. alphas here. Like you want to be the alpha receiver. I want to be the top yeah. dog. Even if I'm not like Lockett kind of beat out DK Metcalf. Still, defenses even know like this is the alpha. Like we got to watch out yeah. for this guy. They respect DK as the alpha. Okay, so let's let's use that word alpha then, which is fine. So, so my only issue is this, right? Even Jackson Smith, Jackson Smith and Jigba not an alpha right because he's being paired next to a receiver dk metcalf who we just said even Tyler lockett teams respect him as the alpha same thing can be said about zay flowers and uh jordan addison how do we know these guys are not alphas because they're simply too small they're too thin they're too frail so now you look at quentin johnson and then you go to jonathan mingo as you can see we're pulling up addison and zay flowers are a little bit smaller so Quentin Johnson, he's 6'3". That's, that's the size, right? 208, we like a little bit more pounds on that. And then you go to Jonathan Mingo, he's also a little bit larger. Problem with Quentin Johnson is that the skills, right? I like the, the catch radius, the, the kind of George pickens type plays where you're just kind of leaping into the air, just, you know, stretching your arms and kind of Randy Moss, that type of stuff, right? Randy Moss, people know what that means when we, when we moss someone on the football field. I don't see that with Quentin Johnson. I do see that with Jonathan Mingo. I do see that with Jonathan Mingo. So I, again, kind of going back to that very first point you said for fantasy football, where it's like Jonathan Mingo is a guy who has a low floor. I get it. I, I totally get it. It's definitely risky. It, it makes me terrified to put him as my WR2, which I also have. We're in agreement so far. But the upside, man, the upside is that he can be the alpha receiver of this class. JSN does not have any shot of being that. Mingo does. Again, JSN is so skilled, so I'm not going to put Mingo as the, the one of this class. 
but man, I mean, I'm 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 willing to ride the upside to put him. You know, anyone after JSN, I'm willing to ride Mingo over that for just the the pure upside of being that alpha receiver. And then of course, all the other stuff we talked about with Terrace Marshall, Bryce Young, opportunity, the depth chart, all that stuff. It all kind of lines up. Um, so I mean, yeah, you're saying reach for Mingo in one of your leagues. I'm kind of on board <laughs> a little bit. Let's let's go over things that are more concrete, basically uh, common ground with even people that don't like Mingo. In other words, okay. like facts. Okay, he's an X. Okay. He's gonna he was have... used as a slot. He was. Oh, so it's versatile. He was, he was used as a slot, so versatile. Yeah, versatile. Mm-hmm. So he didn't play X in college. He did. He did. But what I'm saying okay, is he... he was also okay. I was. Yeah. I thought, okay. Which is that ver- yeah, that's also good. That's also a plus. He can play the slot. He's gonna have every opportunity to be the alpha on the Panthers. I think everyone can agree with it. Whether he fails or not, like we do that all the time. He's gonna be good, he ends up being bad. He's gonna be bad. Like, but Adam Thielen is like he's only got like one year left of the lifespan. Like he's so old, right? Yeah. Adam Thielen's going to be gone. There's not really a lot of competition there. Those other guys we named off, like they could be gone or be nobody's really soon. Uh, so he's going, he has a direct path. He's going to get every opportunity. Even if he fails, he's going to keep failing for two to three years. He's going to have a longer leash. And that draft capital kind of, I don't want to put too much weight in the draft it's capital, but it, it it's also helping that point is like, you're not going to, draft a guy early round two is it 2.08 2.08 yeah like that's super early round two and just be like all right year two he's not going to get that josh rosen treatment <laughs> it's like, like what did we do <laughs> we drafted an idiot um yeah so we those are the things we know and we know he's 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 tied to bryce young yeah who is mm-hmm. a great prospect um you might not like him but that's fine so we know these things, and that's why I'm willing to to take the risk. Like it's all set out right there. Only thing that's left is Mingo just has to not suck, and then he'll make us look. <laughs> that's all he's got to do, man. <laughs>